This video is sponsored by World Anvil. What would have happened if the cast of Critical Role had stuck with Pathfinder instead of switching to D&D 5th Edition? It's a question that comes up a lot in the TTRPG community, especially from folks who do kind of wish D&D 5e hadn't become the dominant force in gaming, for any number of reasons. Usually when people say this, what they're really asking is, would D&D 5th Edition have become anywhere near as huge as it is now if Critical Role hadn't played it on the most popular actual play show in history? And we could honestly debate that until the end of time. Obviously, they switched editions for a reason. They believed 5e was a better fit for the livestream format. I think their reasons made a lot of sense. But I also do have a video coming up next month talking about all the factors that made D&D 5e so big, and Critical Role is definitely one of them. You certainly can't deny the impact it had. However, today I want to look at this question from a completely different perspective. What would the Critical Role characters have looked like if they'd been designed in Pathfinder instead? So today I'm going to take a look at one of the characters from Critical Role's second campaign and see what they would look like if they had been created in Pathfinder instead of D&D 5e. Now, I'm going to be using Pathfinder 2nd Edition for this character creation process, despite the fact that I do know that this version of the game wouldn't have been around yet when Campaign 2 launched, but that actually brings me to the real reason I'm making this video. I'm trying to get more familiar with Pathfinder 2e. I've been running a Pathfinder game for a few months now. I had to take a break to deal with some family stuff. I'm fine, the wife is fine, the baby is fine, but someone in the family needs a little bit of extra care, so my games are on hold while we help them out. Anyway, I do plan to talk about my Pathfinder game at some point in the future once I get a chance to play some more, but one thing that has been kind of a hurdle for me is that I don't really have a handle on the game yet, particularly from a player perspective. My players are incredible, and they know the game well enough to essentially run their own characters and also coach me through how the game is supposed to work in general, but I'd also like to roll up my sleeves and start learning the system for myself. And generally speaking, I'm an experiential learner. I learn by doing. And while I have had people offer to run Pathfinder games for me, and I do plan to take them up on that once I get a chance, I also want to start teaching myself more about the character creation process. So I'm going to take a look at one of the characters from Campaign 2, Caleb Widogast, and essentially adapt him to Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And I plan to do other characters in the future as well. In fact, maybe I'll do some of the Vox Machina characters when the new season of the cartoon comes out in October. Those are going to be really funny because they were Pathfinder characters before the live stream began. So, this series is sort of a thought experiment about an alternate universe version of Critical Role where they'd stayed with Pathfinder, but really it's just an excuse for me to make some Pathfinder characters and get better acquainted with the system. And also put Critical Role characters in the thumbnails, that never hurts. Now, unlike D&D 5e, Pathfinder does have a core campaign setting that is very explicitly referenced throughout the text. And if you're Matt Mercer and you're running a game for your players where you want them to disregard those setting-specific options in favor of material that's more appropriate to your homebrew world, you need to let them know that up front. But you don't just want to dump a whole bunch of original lore in your players' laps either, because that doesn't help them make a decision. It's too daunting. Unless you offer that information in a more cohesive, comprehensive format. Like the kind you can get if you use today's sponsor, World Anvil. World Anvil is a fantastic online toolkit that you can use to build articles and share them with your players. You can make individual pages for any aspect of your world, like different nations, factions, magic items, monsters, and events like disasters and wars. And thanks to World Anvil's Chronicles feature, you can take all the different events you want to track and connect them to a map or a bunch of maps. You can have different timelines as well, so maybe you have a few that you share with your players, but some others that you keep hidden from them, like the timeline of your villain's master plan. And World Anvil is offering a discount to the viewers of this channel. If you visit worldanvil.com slash supergeekmike and use the promo code supergeek at checkout, you could save 51% off of any annual membership. Yeah, that's right, you'd get more than half off your membership. That's awesome. Once again, that's worldanvil.com slash supergeekmike and use the promo code supergeek. Thank you so much to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Now, this video will contain very minor spoilers for Critical Role Campaign 2, mainly focusing on the design of Caleb Widogast as a character and not divulging much about his backstory or his build at later levels, but we do reference those things in vague terms because they're applicable as we try to find the best analogs within the Pathfinder system for Caleb's build, backstory, and playstyle. I tried to keep things as vague as I could, but I know some people really do prefer to go into each campaign completely cold, so if that's what you'd prefer, you'll probably want to steer away from this video for the time being and come back to it once you've got at least a few episodes of Campaign 2 under your belt. Just leave a comment and let me know that's what you're doing. It helps with the algorithm. Don't actually say it's for the algorithm, but we'll know. We're cool. If you're still here and you don't care about spoilers and you're either not familiar with this character or you just need a refresher, let me tell you a little bit about him. Caleb Widogast is Liam O'Brien's character from Critical Role Campaign 2. He's a human wizard who speaks with a Zemnian accent, which is a German accent for our purposes. He has a familiar named Frumpkin, who typically takes the form of an orange cat. He's kind of grungy when we meet him, and he's canonically smelly, but that was a bit of a Laura Bailey contribution, not part of the original concept for the character. Long story. Caleb is generally soft-spoken and rather unassuming, but he can be quite eloquent when he needs to be. Mechanically, he's a transmutation wizard, and he's a variant human with the keen mind feat. 
He also has the Haunted One background, because of course he has a tragic backstory. He's one of Liam O'Brien's D&D characters. He's also true neutral, but alignment isn't a thing in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, so we won't do much with that here. And honestly, the reason I'm starting with Caleb is because I personally love wizards in D&D. In fact, the only wizard I've ever played from levels 1 to 20 was a red-haired human wizard with a tragic backstory involving fire who was also filthy all the time. Don't worry, I'm not saying that Liam stole the concept from me. He's openly discussed how he had this character idea in his mind for a long time. And both characters have a lot in common with Raceland from the Dragonlance books. That was a very conscious influence on me, and we do know that Liam was a big fan of that series. So I personally think that's why our characters are similar at all. Plus, to be frank, the idea that Liam could have been one of the few dozen or so people who listened to our show would be extremely flattering. I think it's extremely unlikely. But my point is, if I were to create another Pathfinder character for my own home game, someone that I plan to play for a long time, my first instinct would probably be to go with a wizard, because I enjoy the 5e wizard so much. But let's find out what it's like to create a wizard in a completely unfamiliar system. I'm using Path Builder, which is completely free, it's very easy to use. I don't personally love the UI on Path Builder, but it, it's a very helpful tool, so... Uh, just like me. Okay, class is gonna be wizard. Background. Okay. So, Caleb from Critical Role was a haunted one in his background, which is obviously, it, that's a specific 5th edition background. I don't know if we're going to find something quite like that, but we're going to see what we find. Hold on, that's really interesting. Academy dropout. Whoa, okay. You were enrolled at a prestigious magical academy, but you've since dropped out. Maybe there was a momentous incident. Maybe you had to return to other responsibilities. Or perhaps it was just too much for you. Whatever the case, your exit from the Academy has shaped your life as much as your entrance, and led you to a life of adventure. Well, that is exactly what happened to Caleb Widowcast. <laughs> Trained in one skill of your choice, that sounds good. Feet of your choice for which you meet the prerequisites. I don't know, I need to, I, I don't know the feats that well, so I'd have to take a look and see. We'll have to come back to this. You critically fail a diplomacy check, reroll the triggering diplomacy check using the second result. That's a good option. Or we just get general training, which just gives us an extra feat. Again, I don't know the feats that well. I mean, we need to look at the, the full feats. So what we're going to do is we're going to take general training and we're going to use that as a way to look at our general feats. I think the closest we're going to get is recognized spell, which does is something that Caleb did a few times during the campaign. And does kind of match the keen mind aspect. We're going to go with that one. Which means we're going to stick with skilled human rather than versatile human because i didn't see any other feats in there that we really would need um obviously if someone feels differently you know let me know um and 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 feel free to do differently on on your end if you were doing the same thing but for our purposes um i think that makes the most sense school of ars magica runes and wards numbers and letters they underpin all magic making them the logical subject for a wizard who studies fundamental forces whether you're lacing your words with magic to compel others, casting wards around your workshop, or destabilizing the very structure of an opponent's spells, you know this unassuming school carries elegant power. Okay, interesting. Some of the spells are message. That's a good fit. Disguise magic. That's interesting. Dispel magic. Good. Translate. Good. I'm trying to highlight the ones that Caleb actually casts throughout the campaign, or at least at early levels. Sending. Yeah, there's enough here that sounds like Caleb. Protective wards. You expand a ring of glyphs that shields your allies. You and any allies in the area gain a plus one status bonus to AC. Each time you sustain the spell, the emanation's radius increases by five feet to a maximum of 30 feet. It's not exactly something that he did during the campaign, but he did cast some abjuration spells. It does feel appropriate still, so I think that works. I think we're gonna go with Ars Grammatica. That feels like the best fit. Combining spells to make more powerful spells. This is tough. I, I definitely went hard mode because uh, <laughs> I don't know any of these feats yet. Oh, wait, hold on. Is this familiar? Yes. Yeah, we'll use that one. He, the familiar was a big deal for Caleb. We'll stick with that one. That works. Alarm, for sure. That was a big part of Caleb. Get disguise and magic instead of disguise self. Ooh, illusory disguise. Yeah, we'll take that. Message, definitely. Detect magic. There it is. Okay, perfect. Illuminates. You light all non-magic sources in an area that use fire to provide their light. Ooh, that's cool. That's a strong maybe. He had dancing lights before. And he had fire bolts. 
telekinetic projectile. What is the closest thing to firebolt that we might have? Caustic blast? That's acid. Ignition. Oh, there we go. Snap your fingers, point at a target that begins to... Yeah, we'll use. We'll take that. A light spell. We'll just use light because it creates an orb of light that's pretty close to dancing lights. So we'll take that. I believe he did take shield pretty quickly thereafter. So we'll take shield and we'll take one more spell. What else did he maybe have? Chromatic orb? Let's take caustic blast because that's pretty close. How many rituals am I allowed to take? Just one, I'm guessing? Elemental Sentinel. Yeah, I think we'll just go with that one. It's the closest thing that I'm seeing. I don't even know how many rituals you're supposed to get. I mean, am I not supposed to get any? I have no idea. Okay, so I looked up rituals, and as I suspected, I wasn't supposed to take a ritual at level one. That's not a standard part of character creation for the wizard, which is honestly fine. The ritual I chose wasn't, like, integral to getting closer to the Caleb Woodogast character. As you saw, I didn't think any of the rituals really matched Caleb. Of course, in a hypothetical Campaign 2 run in Pathfinder, Caleb would probably learn some rituals at higher levels. The character would, of course, diverge from his 5e counterpart as he leveled up. But I only chose a ritual because I thought I was supposed to, not because any of the rituals seemed to scream Caleb Widogast. Now, normally I would ask other players and the GM for help making my character, but in this case, I'm going to turn it over to you. If you're a Pathfinder fan, I'm hoping you can let me know whether my Pathfinder character is legal or not. And if you're also familiar with Caleb Widogast, let me know if there are any other choices I could have made that would have served the character better. I'm genuinely hoping to hear what I got wrong so I can get a better sense of this system. There might be something where you just disagree with my interpretation, and that's fine. That There's room for debate there, but I want to know if there's something glaring that I missed. But regardless of what you do or don't know about Pathfinder, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, scroll down and hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. Pathfinder videos always struggle in the algorithm, especially with a new version of 5e on the horizon, but I do want to make more videos in this series. It's a lot of fun. So if you want to see these videos, make sure to show this one some love. Make sure to also sound off in the comments and let me know which character from Critical Role I should build in the next installment. If you want to support my channel, consider joining my Patreon, I join my Discord server, and sign up for my mailing list. Make sure to also check out my latest video. It's about something called Whirlpool World Building. I'm really happy with it. Make sure you're registered to vote. Seriously, just double check. It only takes a second and it's really important. Until next time, play fair and have fun.